Welcome to r slash choosing beggars, where someone asks for a free house. This next post is a Twitter post from a journalist. A woman emailed me to say that she doesn't subscribe to my newspaper, but can I please copy and paste all of my columns about homelessness for her because she wants to read them? I wonder if she demands free groceries when she goes to Safeway. Hashtag support local journalism. Then OP adds, The best part was she also said that she'd accept hard copies of my columns mailed to her. That sounds like a good use of my time and money. And down in the comments we have this story from Denell. I worked for a newspaper for 22 years. About once or twice a week, someone would call to ask for a copy of a newspaper if they or one of their family members appeared in it. I always mailed it to them for free as a kindness. Often multiple copies. Never, not once, did anyone ever call or email me back after receiving them to say thank you. Not once! This next post was posted to r slash unpopular opinions. Don't buy the random assortment of donuts if you're bringing donuts for people. It's always nice when people bring in a box of donuts and you get real excited to open the lid and have one. Something that's always driven me nuts is when people bring donuts to work or an event and it's a complete random assortment of donuts and you have no idea what they are. More often than not, they don't all get eaten and then you have to throw them away. Like, I really appreciate you for spending your own money going out of your way to get them for everyone, but dang it, get normal donuts! Glazed, powdered, chocolate, cream filling, something you know that everyone eats. I literally walked into work to a donuts box and it had a random filling donut with vanilla toppings sprinkled with Captain Crunch and Special K cereal. Like, I'm not trying to sound ungrateful, but if you're gonna spend your money, spend money on food that people will actually eat. Even for choosing beggar's logic, this doesn't make any sense. The logical thing to do is to get a random assortment of donuts. Because if you just get, you know, an entire dozen of chocolate donuts, then there's bound to be that one person who doesn't like chocolate and then they get pissed off. At least with a random assortment, each person can pick the donut they like, right? And also, down in the comments, we have this story from Sean Perfect. So, this reminds me of something that happened to me. I was leaving my first job, and I bought a cake for the team. Then, one of my coworkers approaches me. What about me? What about you? I'm a vegan. Okay. Where's my cake? I did a nice thing for the office. I'm not making you eat it. You should be more considerate. This is my last day and I'll probably never see you again, so F off. On this next post, OP is trying to sell a collection of games on Facebook Marketplace. Hey OP, I was just wondering what price you have for everything, mate. I have connections all over the country. I am a collector. Collection will not be a problem if we can find the right price. My contacts will pay you cash on collection. Could you provide me with some information on all the products, please? Um, hello? I'm looking for 260 pounds for everything, pal. If I sold everything on eBay individually, it'd come out to 435 pounds, so selling them together at 260 is a deal. Being a collector of 17 years, I know my stuff, and I know the prices too. The final price will depend on the info you give me, because I price the items at around 250 pounds, if they're complete and have a 7 out of 10 rating. I'm sure you're aware of the Chinese on eBay controlling prices. That's why if you look under sold, you'll see the same game sold multiple times. I'll pass then. The price has gone through the roof recently. As I said, I can get around 400 pounds if I sell these individually on eBay. That includes damages and fees. I'll do 100 pounds if they're in average condition, or 150 if they're all perfect and complete. Prices are controlled by the Chinese, lol. You won't get what you want because of the Chinese. Lol, I've already had higher offers, so no thanks. Have a good evening. Haha, <laughs> BS. Because if you had higher offers, you would have sold. There's this thing called the Rona. It's caused nationwide lockdowns. I've had offers, but I can't physically sell it until the lockdown is over. Get over yourself, man. Bollocks, as if the flu is going to stop you selling. F you. On this next post, OP is selling an iPhone for 200 bucks. I would like to buy your rose gold iPhone 7 128 gigabytes unlocked for $80. I'll meet you at the circus since apparently you think that I'm an effing clown. The phone is literally an iPhone 6. That generation is old as hell. It's literally the generation after the iPhone 5, which they don't even make anymore, so it shouldn't be more than $80. You're smoking crack if you think it should be. So I will meet you at the circus because you think I'm the clown, not you the clown, me the clown. 
First, you might want to read the title again, honey. It's an iPhone 7, not 6. Second, I already have a buyer for 180 bucks. Three, if the phone is so old and terrible, why would you want to buy it? Still, an iPhone 7 shouldn't be that much. It's an older generation. Your buyer is paying too much for a phone that's not worth that much. You're scamming them out of more money than the phone is worth. Why would you do that, you awful human being? Why would you charge more than it's worth? I feel sorry that your mother raised you this way. I'll make sure to let my other buyer know that I'm scamming them. Thanks, Alyssa. And then, down in the comments, we have this story from Penny of the Nerds. We were selling a buck stove and had someone appraise it. We threw it up on OfferUp. This young guy comes in and starts telling me that it was only worth a quarter of what we were asking. That we'd never get the money for it, etc. Then, he makes the genius move of saying, I just sold two of those, so I know what they're worth. I said, if you just sold two, why didn't you keep them instead of buying this one? It couldn't possibly be because you want to lowball me on something that we had appraised and then resell it, could it? We never heard from that clown again. On this next post, OP is selling two lip glosses for $11. I would love this. They smell wonderful, smiley face. I would love to have this, but I'm battling stage 4 lymphoma cancer. And I'm trying hard to make myself feel better, but I'm just very embarrassed and struggling financially. Would you please, please, please accept any less? <laughs> I love this post down in the comments <laughs> from Not Just a Pebble. I was born with glass bones and paper skin. <laughs> every morning I break my legs, and every afternoon I break my arms. <laughs> At night, I lie awake in agony until my heart attacks put me to sleep. And beneath that, Clownfish Soup replies, And this lip gloss would make everything better. Selling Ace's laptop for $350. $200? $300. I'm talking to someone else regarding another laptop just like this for $210. Okay, buy theirs then. Low. $235? Down in the comments, we have this story from PM Your Low Hangers. I had a guy wanting to buy a practically new jacket from me. Brand name, kinda pricey. This was back when Craigslist was newer and the go-to place for selling stuff, and posting your phone number publicly wasn't that big of a deal yet. So he texted me and lowballed me with an offer that was like half of my asking price. I hadn't had many bites yet, so I gave him the courtesy of saying no thanks. Then, I had a guy almost immediately after him email me and offer me about three quarters of my asking price. It was still a bit low for what I wanted, so I responded by saying sorry, my lowest price is such and such. He argues that the jacket is from the previous generation and therefore not worth what I'm asking. He went on to say that he often sees him selling for approximately half of what I was asking for. I knew this was a lie since I'd done my research and I knew what they were selling for. So I suggested that he just buy one of those, but he was apparently only interested in the specific color that my jacket was. So, I'm kind of wavering at this point. I hate selling stuff, and I just want it gone. So, I tell him that he's got a deal and I ask for his phone number. I go to enter his phone number in my phone, and I find that it matches the first guy who texted me. He was trying to play me from different angles to get my price down. I called him out on it, and he blew up! Like, he could have been candid and put a spin on it, like he wasn't trying to hide anything, and he just wanted to ask again via email. I mean, it was vague enough that I would have given him the benefit of the doubt, but he went off on a tangent about how we're men, and we should settle this right now, and the jacket is rightfully his, blah blah blah. I should point out that I hadn't even said at this point that the deal was off. This was just all on him exploding, lol. I ended up ignoring him and just gave the jacket to one of my friends. On this next post, OP is selling a house and he gets this text message. How much is the house to buy? It's $299,000. Could we give $200 a month for it until it's completely paid off? We have a one month old baby. And the way that she's making this offer, it sounds like she's offering 0% interest too. So <laughs> if OP actually accepts this offer, then it will take this choosing beggar 125 years to pay off this house. <laughs> the one month old baby won't even be alive to see this house getting paid off. The baby's descendants will still have to pay that mortgage off. And then down in the comments, we have this contribution from imoscar.com. I tried to sell my house with a realtor a few years ago. This was the worst offer. 
a guy wanted to rent my house for one year at a hundred bucks a week. At the end of that year, he wanted the option to buy the house and he wanted all of his rent payments that year to count as a down payment. Then, if he decided not to buy, we would refund him all the rent money that he paid that last year. He didn't try to sell me a sob story or anything. He just got angry that we don't know how normal business is done. Does this guy honestly think that <laughs> anyone would accept that offer? If you could just get your rent refunded at the end of every year if you decided not to buy, then nobody would ever pay rent. Because every year they would just live in a place for a year, get refunded at the end, and then move and do it all over again. Selling One Tree Hill Season 3 DVD set for $6. What condition are those DVDs in? Good, I've used them a few times. Would you be willing to trade mine for yours? Like, trade the same product? Yes, please. That is not something that I'd be willing to do. Oh, I was just asking. I was asking because mine is missing disc too, and I can't find them for a reasonable price. On this next post, someone posts on Facebook, Warning! Four horses are running loose along Blank Road. They're heading towards the high school. And then a choosing beggar replies, Please put as much info as possible on a post like this, as you've had a lot of us horse owners totally panicked. I just left work in a complete stress having had two people message me and I couldn't find this post to see that it had four. I only have two horses. It would be helpful to know if they're tacked up. That way, we would know that it must be horses who are out riding and not in a field grazing. Also, we could use other info such as color and size. You could just say large horse or small pony. That's fine for someone who knows nothing about horses. But it may help when people are trying to establish if it could be theirs. Thank you. Not having a go at you, just trying to prevent a lot of stress. I believe the horses are now heading home with riders though, which is great news. And then OP replies, what else would you like me to say? It's all the information I had. It's all that I saw. I'll keep to myself in the future. Why am I not surprised by your response? Why am I not surprised by yours? This reminds me of that old joke. How do you know if someone's a horse girl? Don't worry, she'll tell you. Requirements to be my girlfriend version 2.0. 1. Must have decent boobs. 2. Must have a muscular butt. 3. Must have abs. 4. Must have nice hair. 5. Must work out regularly. 6. Must have no debt. 7. Must have no bad tattoos. 8. Must have no kids. 9. Must be between 18 to 40. 10. Must have thick muscle thighs. 11. Must be pretty. 12. Cannot have guy friends. 13. I have to check your phone once a week. 14. I must be present when you hang out with your girlfriends and no girls' nights out. 15. Must have a decent job. 16. Must do everything I say. 17. Has to call me every day. 18. Must cook me dinner five nights a week. 19. Must come with me on dates. 20. Must do nice things for me. 21. Must give me a nice gift at least once a month. 22. Having kids must be an option. 23. Must help around the house. Down in the comments, I like this post from Il Pinguino. This isn't a red flag. This is a communist revolution. Also, my favorite thing about this post is of all the things this guy prioritizes, number 10 on that list, so top 10 most important, is thick muscle thighs. So with that at number t <laughs> with that at number 10 and a muscular butt at number 2, this guy must be looking for some girl who can crack a walnut with her butt cheeks. Hey, I saw your comment on my post and I thought it might be better to privately message you. I typically charge 50 bucks a lesson and the lessons are in or near your home. You get one hour of one-on-one -on -one teaching, hands-on learning, and a write-up within one week of the end of the lesson. Hi, I love that you have a plane and write-up after just one lesson. I had a trainer for two months and I never got anything close to that. I finally had to let her go this week. I have a three-year-old 90-pound Labrador. He's a lot to handle. The main issue is how crazed he gets when he greets people. So I can't have anyone over or I have to put him in the car. So I'm on social security disability insurance and only pull in $900 a month. So do you do a sliding scale based on income? I'm just gonna ask and it's okay if it's a no. Would you consider doing the training for $30? It never hurts to ask. No response. That's not a good sign of integrity. 
Actually, Martha, I just got home from work. I've been at work all day. I'd really love to help you out with your lab, but I have to stay true to my prices. I'm sorry. Wow. That says a lot. You're more about money than really being serious about animals. Shame on you, especially in these times. It's best if you don't respond. Because I have to work to live? I work for someone else to make money. I'm not all about money at all. I'm more about making a living and surviving. No, about not having a sliding scale. Because maybe COVID took away someone's job? Meaning me. Forget it. Sorry for whatever's my fault. I have to move on. If you want to spin it that way, you clearly said, it's okay if it's a no. So it's a no from me. Thank you for asking. Yeah, that's clearly the best way to spin it. I can tell you're an effing grunt. Don't respond or I'll have to get real nasty. I don't want to trash on people who are on disability insurance because if you can't work, you can't work. But this lady is not working and is getting money for not working. And this lady is trashing on someone who is working for an income. Also, I have a sneaking suspicion that this choosing beggar didn't fire her last trainer. I'd bet that trainer pieced out of there really quickly. That was r slash choosing beggars. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.